you so much for your lovely input. Would you perhaps mind staying for a moment? I can stay only for a moment, Miss Avery. A deadline looms over my head for the paper. Thank you, dear. Alma, I know that many in your German community are sympathetic to the plight of the Negro. As a former abolitionist, I cannot stand for this talk of partial suffrage, disenfranchising these good people. However, I do wish to proceed delicately. Delicately? Yes, of course. It is bad for the ignorant and vicious to do ill. It is worse for the educated and honest to do nothing. I will speak, Alma. You can be sure of that. I am curious as to what you think might be the best means to approach this topic, uh, given your sympathies. It is indeed a sensitive topic of discussion, Miss Avery. Not all members of Lyra share your same view. Mm -hmm. I am concerned there are some women who may hinder our cause. Miss Clay, for example, has allied herself with women who seek the vote in order to drown out the remnants of the Negro vote that they have not managed to suppress. I am considering writing a letter to those that hold these beliefs, saying that if they will not join in our cause, that they at least please do not hinder it. I wish you the best in these efforts, Miss Avery. I do worry that a letter might be seen as a personal attack rather than a defense of ideas. True, true. And I do believe that we should be talking about this openly in our organization, not in the shadows. Everyone needs to be discussing this. If you believe in a free exchange of ideas, why not write a pamphlet? They've proven to be a very effective form of communication, reaching the masses without singling any one member out or making offense. Yes, that could be quite lovely. Would you do me a favor and look it over? I'd be delighted. To tell you the truth, Alma, I have been going over in my mind so many times the potential arguments. I feel the pamphlet is already half written. <laughs> I know just how I will end it. I've been thinking that so many of my frustrations come from seeing these Christian women behave in terribly unchristian ways. We send missionaries to Africa at vast expense of life and treasure in an effort to spread the gospel of Christ, to inculcate a belief in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of men. Mind not those whom we call heathen. Be justified in sending missionaries to us north and south. Georgia. Hello, Mary. Georgia, where are your sisters? Molly's at home with Mama, and Alice is writing the club newsletter. When did you get back, Nanny? I thought you'd be in D.C. working with contractors for the school for the next week or so. I made an early return. The Foreign Mission Board has requested a meeting. 
and the Baptist Women's Convention has some papers for me to edit before being published. I'm happy to find you all here. Georgia, how was your day at school? Mine could have been better, I'll be honest. Oh no, what happened? I just wish the city would be able to provide some kind of support beyond education for these children. My brightest student couldn't pay attention all day, and when I finally asked her about it, she said she hadn't eaten anything since the day before. Mm -hmm. That's terrible, Georgia. But we don't need some city to provide support for us. We can provide it for ourselves. Will that be when you have your own school? Yes. When my school is completed, I will run it right and let education lift us all up. You just keep on believing that. And I'm going to drag Miss Professor here in as my right-hand woman. <laughs> Only if you open up the school in Louisville, then. That's what you think now, Mary Virginia. I just wonder how we're supposed to get anything done when the men won't give us the vote and the white folks do their best to keep the men's voices out of everything. We'll all be able to vote if Miss Susan Look Avery has her way about it. You talking about justice to the Negro? Have you been reading the pamphlet too? <laughs> we were just discussing it. Yes, I'm surprised that the president of the Bureau write such direct words. I know not everyone shares the same views, but there's some lovely stuff. In Yes, I agree. Some of the writing is absolutely truth bearing. However, there is also a lot that is very problematic and is not helpful to our plight. Do you see how she talks about our vote? How they become free, we need not relate here. It is enough to say that it was not because of their asking. That implication discounts every slave turned abolitionist that we worked for our own freedom. Nanny, you mustn't expect perfection here. She's sympathetic to our cause. If we search the history of the world, we shall find no story more pathetic and in multitudes of cases, none more tragic than that of colored people of this country. Stolen from their native land, sold into a bondage in which they were held for centuries in that most abject slavery with no rights, even of person, which their masters were bound to respect Helpless and hopeless, they lived on in peaceful, friendly, and often intimate and trusted relationships with whites. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I don't recall any friendly relation, although their men were certainly intimate at times. Nanny. Dude, that's not decent. But it's true. At least Susan Avery has the decency to portray us as gentle rather than as beasts that need to be put down. Yes, she speaks for our side, but it is terribly patronizing. As a race, they have proven themselves amiable, docile, forgiving, and quite as trustworthy as could have ever been expected when we considered their training and environment. It's insulting. The pamphlet may be called Justice to the Negro Nanny, but it wasn't written for the Negro. It was written for the white woman in the suffrage clubs. And if that gets them to listen, then I'm for it. It's better than most of our kind would write.
is not good enough. have a moment to recuperate. She hadn't even told her husband yet. She knew that he would want to try again straight away if he'd gotten his hopes up. God blessing them with another child. How could she go against that argument? I have to say some small part of me is relieved. When she told me she suspected another pregnancy, I was so worried for her. She's only 25 and has seven children. things are. You can't ever begin to undo them. I just don't like seeing women's bodies broken, worn out like this. It's terrible. Julia, my home, my love. Keep the faith. Every day we help another woman. We're Another step closer to freedom. I'll see you at supper. There's another Lyra meeting. Susan said she's serving a light supper. Anna, I, I just don't know. I'm so tired of listening to Bible verses and hearing reports and mailing pamphlets. What good is the Louisville Equal Rights Association when there's this is back? And doctors like us are suspect. And women like us, who don't have men to care for us, aren't even people in the laws of the land. That's why we meet. That's what the pamphlets are for. But we have to change the laws of the land. Without the franchise. Without the franchise, we change nothing. Remember, this is a marathon. Not, not a, a sprint. sprint. Although I'm not much of a runner, maybe it could be a bicycle race. <laughs> 